All right, guys, so let's begin this lesson with a question. So take a moment and answer this here on Edpuzzle. Jacob asked his science teacher an excellent question. Why do ice cubes float in a glass of water? How would you answer his question? All right, so I hope your answer said something about density. Remember, if something is less dense than another object, if it's, if like, if you put the ice in water, if the ice is less dense than the water, the water, the ice will float. If it is more dense than the water, the object will sink. So based on that, we should see that ice is less dense than the water because ice floats in water. All right, so let's begin with today's lesson. We will use this later on. All right. So today we are looking at heating the atmosphere. So take a moment and go ahead and write your aim on your guided note sheet. How can heat be transferred in the atmosphere? All right, so as you go through the video, please pause as needed for you to complete the guided notes and make any additional notes if something's not included. So let's begin with the idea of the heat source. So the heat source for our planet is the sun. All right, so let's continue on here. Energy from the sun is transferred through space and through the Earth's atmosphere and eventually reaches the Earth's surface. We talked about this yesterday when we looked at greenhouse effect. All right, so since this energy warms the Earth's surface and the atmosphere, some of it, or it, it becomes heat energy. All right, so now let's go into how the different ways heat can be transferred. So, there are three ways that heat is transferred within the atmosphere. Those are radiation, conduction, and convection. So, we're going to go through each of the different ways that heat is transferred in the coming slides. So, let's first start with radiation. So, this is how the energy from the sun reaches Earth. So, the definition of radiation here is energy from a source travels through space. So, Example here is if you're standing a distance away from a fire, you can feel the fire through that empty space. So this is radiation. So, so radiation is not felt until it is absorbed by a substance. So the heat is coming off of the pot there, but you do not feel it until you actually touch the pot. So this does not require a medium to transfer the energy as it does with conduction and convection, meaning the energy can reach you without direct contact. All right. The next one we're going to look at is conduction. So this one is energy that is transferred in through direct contact of molecules through a material. So this is the primary mode of heat transfer through solids. And an example of this is heating up a pot on a stove burner. So notice that the pot is actually touching the stove burner there. So there is physical contact there. So the amount of energy transferred depends on how conductive the material is. So this takes you into the concept of if something is metallic or non-metal, non-metallic. So think like things that are insulators or things that are conductors. So if something is a conductor, it's going to conduct that energy more effectively versus something that's an insulator that will not conduct that energy as effectively. So metals are good conductors, so they tend to heat to transfer energy through the stove to the food in the pots and pans. So air is the best insulator. It's so good at insulating products to try to trap air and not allow it to move. All right, so let's look at the final form of energy transfer, which is convection. This is the transfer of energy by the movement through a medium, like air or a liquid. Notice the little labels here. This is the simulates energy being transferred within the system. So this is the primary mode of heat transfer through gases and liquids. An example, as you see, is the boiling water. So this one has a little bit more that goes into it. So as the gas or liquid is heated, it warms and expands and, this, and it rises because the water or air, whatever is being heated, becomes less dense. So as you increase temperature, density will decrease. When the medium cools, and it becomes more dense and sinks. So as, as the temperature lowers, the density increases. 
This causes something called convection currents. So as the medium warms and rises or cools and sink, it creates convection currents. So that's simulated by the example you see here. So as the, it heats up, it boils and it becomes less dense. As it gets to the top, it's farther away from the heat source, it cools and it forms these convection currents. All right, so convection examples, you've got boiling water like we just talked about. Um, and you'll notice also if you're cooking something like pasta, as it shows you in the slide, as it heats up, you'll see the pasta rolling around in the pot. All right, hot air balloons are another excellent example of this. So when the hot air, the hot air in the hot air balloon is heated, the, it, and the balloon rises. As the air cools, it falls out the bottom of the balloon, and it's replaced by hot air as it's being pumped up through that engine. So the next is a building. Have you ever been in a basement or an attic on a hot day? Which is cooler? Well, if you ever sit in an attic very long, especially during the summer, unless it has some type of ventilation up there, it is normally sweltering hot. So its energy is able to get very, very hot in the attic since heat rises. All right. And in a basement, it's normally quite cool because it's underground and the ground is a good insulator. All right. So here's just a little graphic visual gives you a visualization of the convection current in the atmosphere, which is just illustrated by the room in this picture. So the fire heats the air, the hot air rises, and it just it, as the hot air rises, it begins to cool, and the cold air sinks, and the cold draft comes under the door, and it just kind of forms a little loop. So anytime you fill a draft in a house, this is what is causing it. All right, and the last thing is just another visual showing you each type of energy transfer. So you have radiation. This is spread through non-direct contact. So the heat is touching the pan without touching the actual fire. Then you have conduction that's happening between the handle and the hand. And then you have the convection happening within the liquid or fluid because this could also be air but in this example it is liquid all right so once you're done you should be good to move to the next part of the assignment guys